All right, so in this one, we are going to be doing my top 10 list. Wait a little bit, you know, prior to uh, the beginning of the weekend to the end of the weekend to do this because I do feel a little bit more experience with, you know, the matchmaking PvP because early season obviously did reset on Tuesday. I want to wait till, you know, at least you get some competent matches against really good teams. And we're kind of at that setting. If you're like BR65 right now, you're going to get very much in there. And I'm at like 66, 67 right now. So I face a lot more competent settings. And I do think I have uh, some little takes to throw on here for Cell and everybody in this. There's only 10 units here. I could do a top 15, but I'll be real. Uh, you are not seeing anybody outside the top 10. Honestly, you're barely seeing some units even in the top 10. Uh, don't think there's much more explanation I need to do. I think it's obvious that these units are at very high stars. So if you consider it 9, 14, whatever, it's going to be the same of 9 or 14 stars. So consider it whatever the hell you like. But uh, yeah, let's begin. So number 10, I actually just did a video on this unit. If you didn't see it, go check it out, is Mr. Ultra Rosé. I think Ultra Rosé has definitely taken a hit. We have Cell, we have Goku Frieza, we have Omen, we have UGB. All these units are in the top 10. All these units are very good in a setting right now where there is a only one yellow running around. So Rosé gets hurt by all these purples having no real counter to them because the strong red that is obviously on this list, it actually is too, but the very prominent red of UBB. So while you might think, okay, red, green color synergy, that's perfect. What is there to have Rosé do in a matchup? I mean, he builds up pretty mediocre, like, to be honest. He has to have them be, what is it, uh, abnormal condition to build up his cup pen, which obviously is a very important part of his toolkit. His uh, Dragon Ball Struction is kind of nullified to an extent, you could say it is. If there is a UVB in a match, he stops Dragon Ball Destruction, so he kind of gets nullified there. Very good aspect to his uh, utility. Uh, his Type Nurge obviously has to take main ability to do. His Cover Null, again, takes full gauge just to get. And full gauge, I think, is like 10 cards. That's a lot of cards with no Cover Null to get that. That's always been a thing that's happened for him. It's just that his oppressiveness was so good prior to this with boost, with everything else. It didn't really, you know, matter that much. But now it definitely does matter. And even more so than that, his Paralyzed, UVB cancels allies, attribute downgrades, and normal conditions. So he could cancel the Paralyze on his allies. I believe it's three times. So Rosé... His value is just diminishing over time. It is a similar thing to Hit, I will be honest. Hit is right next to Rosé and number 9. Um, both units are build-up units. Being a build-up unit or a timer count based unit that is locked behind X situation, your value is not going to be crazy right now. If you see UVB, who is arguably number 1 in the first 30 timer counts, I actually think he is just prominently, fully number 1. First 30 timer counts, that guy's just going, going, going. He has no build-up. He has no nothing. He's just there. He's doing everything. He's just beating the shit out of you. Blue, yellow, green, purple, orange. Doesn't fucking matter your color. He's beating the ever-living fucking piss out of you in 30 timer counts. With Rosé, with Hit, with these units that are build-up or timer count locked units, it is not ideal for them unless they have a very good way to stall or to get these methods going. And Rosé does not have that. Rosé is in a very bad spot with all these purples. There are some blues. You see Sword of Hope. You see LS17. But they have very good protection. You know, look at Sword of Hope. He's with Cell. You look at LS17. He's with Goku Frieza. You look at even uh, more so than that. There's just no need than anything to have Rosé. Like, you are not coring Rosé on a team. He is your fourth option on future. And there's another team he's best on. I mean, you could, I guess, throw him on some stupid shit. But, like, his best team's future. And he's not core there. He's been replaced by Cell. And I think that's obvious to say that Cell will be higher than Rosé. But... Yeah, it's unfortunate. Rosé's value, I mean, I guess it is fortunate because people do not like Rosé because his Paralyzed gimmick was very annoying and it's, you know, prime time. But uh, it is a situation that Rosé has fallen down. Obviously, he can go back up. This is probably his lowest low point is going to be for a little bit. If it somehow gets lower, I'd be shocked. But yeah, for now, this is uh, the situation for Rosé. I can't see him going any higher than this. I'll be real. I was really fishing for a different unit to go 10th that could have a little bit more value, but... Rosé is still fine as an individual unit, it's just so much of his toolkit is getting stopped by UVB, if not just so many purples, it, it's just, it, his damage is stopped by purples, then his toolkit stopped by UVB, and UVB's every match, a purple's every match, how could I, you know, push this guy to a further extent if that's the case, it's just not feasible, right? Number 9, I already mentioned it, Mr. Hit, uh, listen, it's not like a hit loss value, uh, if anything, I guess he technically gained value because, you know, the game has got better because they got, you know, better third with the, uh, Android team being LS17, Gamers, and Cell, so it's not like he got worse, but 
I I've tried it. I've, you know, matched against it. The thing is with Hit, again, he's a build-up, right? This is going to be an ongoing theme here. With him being a build-up, you have to prioritize him. You have to focus and you have to let him do his thing. Whether it's going to be good or bad damage early game, it's usually going to be bad because he's a build-up. Um, you don't want to. Like, you have Hit on a team. Let's say it's pure uni reps. Uh, Jiren, LS17, Goku Frieza, Hit. Those four that could culminate a team. Really wouldn't use Jiren, but I've run into some Jiren, so let's say Jiren there. Uh, you're always in a position where Goku Frieza will always out damage Hit if you're not prioritizing Hit. Now, the thing is with that is Goku Frieza need three to four cards, then you swap to Frieza, then you just keep going back and forth, and you're just fucking clobbering everything, right? You're getting double Zenkai buffs, you're getting whatever the fuck you're getting, and in that comparison, you have no need for Hit. Now, obviously, Hit is still doing his job with his time skip, with his, uh, you know, very good damage against blues even, and his damage overall, once he does get going, but it's a similar thing to Rose. Like, he's fine as he is, but there's just no need to run the unit. There's just a better unit on the team that you would always focus priority. Like, if I'm running Rose and UVB, I'm letting UVB pop off, and Rose's really not going to build up until maybe I get a little sticky spot. Okay, UVB got sniped out by some stupid shit. All right, it happens, and then it's Rose's turn. It's a similar thing with Hit. If Goku Frieza dies, okay, fine, it's Hit's turn. But, like, you're never prioritizing fucking Hit over Goku Frieza in a combo. It's just the, the slowness of Hit comparably to Goku Frieza is just too much. Um, you really don't need to use him right now. Uh, there's not really a setting where it's like, yeah, Hit is going to go pop off here because you can't kill LF-17. He's already in on anything because, you know, LF-17 works. Uh, Sword of Hope Trunks, he... It's like... UVB fills up the gauge well and Sword Hope tanks it. Hit's gonna do even less than UVB, because UVB's doing all those debuffs and everything, and Hit's starting off at such a lower number comparable to UVB. Uh, there's just no need for Hit. Again, he's fine, he's runnable, he's not bad. If you're on top 10, you're not bad. Even if you're top 15, whatever they are, they're not bad. It's just the necessity for a number 9 or 10 unit comparably to, like, a fucking 6 or 5 or anything above all those units, it, it's just so, like wide like it's like a three different list when you go from like i don't know eight or seven through ten then up and up and up like it, the list kind of just like really power creeps itself with what we can do in early game setting and that is what matters the most because uvb is the early game god you kind of have to focus about early game because that is most important right now not really a late game setting that's going to be something crazy and that actually just hurts some units here as well but number eight uh once again that is unfortunate for hit to be number nine but it is what it is Number eight is going to be the Gammas. Yes, the Gammas obviously get some value increase because, again, I mentioned the Android team does just exist. Androids is a very solid setup right now. Uh, they are deceptively bulky, I feel like. People don't really recognize that because, again, on their first, you know, uh, card they take when they cover in, they heal that off. Basically, the whole entire thing if it's not, you know, something fucking crazy like an ultimate. But they'll heal a lot of it off that first card they take. Uh, they also go, uh, I believe they go defense neutral a couple timer counts on cover, if not just generally. Obviously, they can offensive neutral as well with their, uh, you know, tag mechanic. But the Gammas really aren't that bad right now. They have a lot of good coverage with Cell being even that can die very early. So you can kind of just, like, let him die instead of the Gammas there. LS17 being as good as he is, giving the cup pen he could give, the support and all that. I think the Gammas are in a fine spot. They definitely could be better, and they could be in a better spot in the meta. But right now, with, you know, UVB existing, I can't push them forward. I can't push an agenda to push the Gammas up because, again, UVB is just so fucking dominant in every single goddamn match. Now, to also say, there is a purple every single match, and that's exactly why the game is a game value, right? They have a very good blue in LS17, and they are a very good yellow in themselves, and having that coverage against one another is obviously going to be very important. But pushing them higher would just be outlandish for the current meta, and I don't think they can go anywhere above 8. Again, I think... 8, 9, 10 are all, like, these good options, very good options, but they are not options you're thinking, like, this has to be a staple on my team or I can't win. None of these three are staple options on teams. They are very good on teams. Shit, they might even be core, but you do not need these units comparably as a staple unit to, like, um, 6 and above. I think number 7 is kind of in the same argument, but it's, like, a little more culpable. Um... But six and above, these are staples. You're running every single team, every single time. Eight through ten is on that spot. But number seven is actually going to be Ultra Gogeta Blue. Now, I have been using this guy a lot. A lot last season, more in this season. But 
a lot and not much has changed between seasons it's just been one release of an lf that clearly will be in the top six but i gotta say i run him on a team where it basically is goku frieza on fusions right and he would be one x zenkai buffed and i would think that'd be enough for an ultra maybe he's eight months old uh, whatever he is eight ten whatever the fuck it is right he, he's old right he's getting to that age where it's like all right we gotta like calm down grandpa like slow down your aging a little bit he's getting to that point but I would think 1x Zenka buff would be enough, and it is not. UGB needs, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, his handheld, um, to be fair. Like, this guy needs a double Zenkai buff. He can work on a team that doesn't have support, but he needs a double Zenkai buff. But why would I ever, ever do a situation where I make my worst Z abilities if I'm running, let's say, UGB, Goku Frieza, UVB? Why would I ever do a situation where I'm like, okay, here's Purple 3 coup instead of this better Z ability, so UGB and Goku Frieza get it. Why would I ever do that to like harm my Goku Frieza when they're always gonna be a dominant powerhouse? There's just no real, in my mind, situation you would force focus a worse off unit that's going to have very little playtime comparably to your Goku Frieza or to comparably to your UVB because I run like Red Vegito Bench. I could run like Red Gogeta and go, get him like a one and a half Zenkai buff. But you know, I would think one X once again would be enough. For UGB, unfortunately, it is not. Really, the only reason I would use him, and I do use him on the team I do use him on, is because he will stop a UVB combo early. Obviously, you do the gauge thing if they have a blast and the combo ends. And what he does is give some pressure to the opponent to like, okay, I got these blast early or I'll draw them late and that sucks and my combo ends a little earlier than I'd like. Because UVB can combo 20 counts, 25 counts. He can do that. If he gets lucky cards, he can do that. UGB halts that not really fully because sometimes it's just shitty rng but majority of the time they will end up drawing like two blasts they'll have a green card and a blue card it's like oh shit what the fuck i do here just gotta drop combo end it and hopefully catch them on some bullshit right that's his main value it's similar to rose where the main value is just to kind of you know exist uh usually be more than rose because obviously the gauge right stops the combo from happening but both in a you know, full sequence if i were to compare usually to rose they both take the rush. On their best team, they are both taking the rush. They are never not taking a rush. They are rush fodder at this rate. I know, you're hearing that, you're like, Rose, UGB, we're serious. We are, yes, we are. Shit, even Hit you could argue is rush fodder in some settings because you're not running into goddamn yellow, so what the fuck do I need Hit for, right? If I have LS17, Goku Frieza, fucking Hit, Hits the fucking sack off. That third guy right there, he's the fucking sack off. So you got ultras becoming sack offs at this point. Obviously, gamers wouldn't be because you sack off cell. He wants to die. Um, a UGB, he is in a setting where, yes, he can be good after those 60 counts, 120 counts, and further and beyond from that. But it is not enough. That 120 count marker, there's a lot of copium for it. It's like, just get him past 60 counts. He'll be fine. No, he's not. He genuinely is not. He's good. He's great even at that point. But he is not outdoing um, Goku Frieza. He's not outdoing UVB. If I double Zenkai buff him or not, he's not outdoing those units in their capabilities of staying in potential, other capabilities of comebacks, maybe UVB after a lot of timer counts. But in a lot of settings, you just have to sack off somebody to rush prior to that 60 counts. And not for nothing, he's always going to be that first one you're sacking off. You're never sacking off UVB to a rising rush. You're never sacking off Goku Frieza. And that's like a sneaky rush because, again, the team has Goku Frieza on it to big moves or rush it's always ugb because you're not going to be like oh but i'm going to get my 60 count soon let me just keep them because you know that's going to happen to so he's going to he's going to carry the world he's not he has potential to do very well and shit sometimes he could come back he's done it for me but there's been so many times where it's been he can't come back his blue card's not doing enough his blasts are doing so mediocre comparably to what this guy would have been doing and it's just sometimes you just fall fucking flat on your face and you kept ugb over like a low health uvb and it's like ah maybe if i had uvb i could have won that if i got that you know little green card instead with him instead of this guy the comeback potential is there but it's not as dominant as it once was and that makes sense this guy is starting to age and we have to probably accept that because i see again a lot of fucking copium and i get it, it's a fusion oh my god legends fest blah blah blah, blah. but there's not really a good setting for ugb i mean there's a fine one after 60 counts but once again you're getting rushed prior to 60 counts you're getting a big move against you prior and if that's not happening then you probably already won the match so you gotta just decide am i really sacking off uvb am i really gonna do that instead of ugb rush usually happens 20 30 counts into a match usually around that area 
that's 30 more counts you gotta wait minimum for UGB to do like a good good setting it's just too long I mentioned this where I said like you know timer count gated stuff or build up characters UGB is timer count gated and with that his value just gotta diminish I mean it's unfortunate but it's just, it's just gotta go down I can't see it being much higher than that honestly I only expect it to go down from here I just don't see it you know resurgencing rose i can see it right get like a really strong yellow on your team um hit i could see it you know in like a year if we get like uni rouse buffs gamma's easily but ugb i can't like it's it's cope to say ugb could go up from here I, I don't see it but if it does happen great i just don't see the potential in them number six now number six i feel like people will be huh interesting this unit's above this and then this is about that Number six is actually sort of Hope Trunks. I do think his potential is very neat. I think what he can do in comeback situations is pretty consistent. I do dislike the fact that he only has 50% cup pen instead of 100% because you look at like Omen, who Zenkite alongside him, basically same celebration. He has 100% cup pen, right? So it's a little unfortunate, uh, at least on the ultimate itself, only having that 50% cup pen that does stop you from getting kills. I've seen it time and time again with my own usage or against me. Or sort of hope you would think would kill because like he's got his gauge he's got his big first strike already did it and he did so much damage but then the ultimate falls flat by like 500k and it's like oh shit why'd that happen a similar thing to lf cell actually the low cup pen slash no cup pen with cell obviously does end up uh hurting you to a very big extent in some situations and obviously could lose you a match so i think that is a negative to him but in overall sense, obviously he can take the UVB hits prior to the gauge very well. Now, I'm not saying he tanks UVB. I'm not going to lie to you. Nobody tanks UVB. Nobody on this list tanks UVB. If there's anybody that stops a combo the best, it is Trunks because you get the gauge, reduce the key, yada, yada, yada. But nobody tanks UVB, especially in that early game setting where he's just doing infinite fucking cards. But he does do well against that. He has also run on a two teams. I'm not sure which one's better. It probably is the your future with Cell, UVB, and himself, or Goku Frieza, Sword of Hope, and uh, UVB. You could argue either or. Basically, the Goku Frieza one's just more safe because you can't, you know, get Sword of Hope rushed because he can't, well, rather, Goku Frieza can't the buff effect of, you know, uh, Nullify Endurance from UVB, UGB, whoever the fuck is rushing at that point. So, um, though that team does worse damage, it's arguable either or team. Nonetheless, he's on both, right? He is that uh, foundation there. Again, I mentioned that the six through and up are all units you're going to run into in a more prominent setting. If not going to be something you're like, I need to build a team with this guy. I need to have this guy. He's a very good unit. He's probably a better, you know, sub option than this. Like, let's say UGB is sub optioned with fucking Cell. Okay, who am I running? Cell probably, right? Again, UGB's flaws are just so apparent right now. You can't cope them in, in a high setting, at least to me. But number six being Sword of Hope Trunks, I think it's pretty valid. Uh, I've seen people put him higher. I personally do not because I have had bad situations with him, um, using him, where he does fall flat sometimes, like I mentioned. But if there's anything that's good about him, it's that his color is really ideal right now. And look at Rosé down there. He is number 10 and he's a green. So if this blue is number six, that probably means the coverage for Sword of Hope is very high. And it indeed fucking is. So Sword of Hope being number six, I think it's fine if you want to move him a little bit up to like five i wouldn't debate you but i wouldn't agree personally uh number five now number five the toss-up uh you could argue either or me personally i'm going to argue number five is the uh newer unit and the other unit is going to be number four but if you were to swap four and five i would not disagree with you shit i could even agree with you at some point now six to five i wouldn't agree i wouldn't agree at all but four to five I could agree with you. Number five being Mr. Cell. Now I'm going to say this again. Four and five can swap. They can swap. Again, I would, you know, understand where you're coming from if you said it. But I think Cell is number five simply due to the fact that he does have some lacking. Uh, not for nothing. I do think his aging won't be that graceful. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I've been wrong before. But Having no cut pen, and I mention this a lot because cut pen goes through cut. Every unit in the game has cut. Everyone here has like 50 through fucking 70% cut. You need fucking cut pen or you're going to fucking lack in a lot of settings, right? Especially your big move where you're meant to catch and snipe and do these big things. If you don't have cut pen on it, you're not going to hit as hard. That's just the simple math behind it. I think Trunks, or rather, 
Ah, oh, fuck it, Trunks. So, falls flat in some settings where he has no neutral, none at all. And then from there, having no cup pen on top of no neutral, it is hurtful, it's harmful, but right now, that doesn't matter. You know, he does more to yellow, so that's fine. But more why it doesn't matter is because you're not running into a yellow. There's no Kid Boo, Jiren, VT, Forku. No one's here on that list that's yellow. There's one, and it's a Gammas. And you look at Cell, I guess you could argue he doesn't need the neutral. Look who uh, who's on his fucking team right here. Look who else is on his fucking team right here, right? He doesn't need a neutral setting. You could argue that. But you want individual units to have their own type neutral, right? You don't want them to just be fucking carried by somebody else. And then, well, okay, UVB will stay dominant because he has the coverage for Cell. But Cell, a strong yellow came out. You know, he will dip. It, it just has to happen if that strong yellow does exist. If they are at least dominant enough. But Cell, to get away from his negatives, uh, this guy does an infinite combo with his gauge. He has very high cover. No, it can't be canceled, but no one's really canceling fucking buff effects, to be fair. Um, very high cover null. He has a very good AoE green. It is a long animation, fun fact, but that's up sub count. So if there's no Goku Frieza and you like get that on UVB and you know it's after the timer count lock for the rush, you could just fucking simply rush out a fucking UVB real quickly because you landed one AoE green with Cell. Pretty moronic, but it is uh, the situation there. His feint on blue card, I think he's like 10%, 20%, 30%. Um, when he's last man standing, 30%. I've gotten it with the 10% like a lot of times now. It does not feel like 10%. Appreciate you, Mr. Motorcycle over there. You are, yes. Speed up, please. We all care so much. You have the uh, faint though that has 10%, 20%, 30%. And um, what else does he have in his toolkit? Good Z ability, honestly. Double attack and strike defense, very good <laughs> in all reality. Uh, more for him because he, he can be built either way. But um, I, I just think he flows very well. Obviously, future is going to be sell, sort of hope UVB, or you could run... I mean, fuck it. You could run UVB, Cell, Goku Freeze. I'm sure you could make Z-Abilities work some bullshit way with that, right? With, like... I couldn't even tell you the fucking bench. But I'm sure some bullshit can manage with that, right? It, it seems pretty fucking toxic where you have such an AoE, AoE back-to-back -back situation going for you there. Then Goku Freeze are just being as good as they are. But Cell, his, uh, his value is high. His value is very high. I wonder if this changes very quickly or if it takes a good minute. We will see with the next unit coming out, whether it be a yellow, green, whatever the fuck it is. Obviously, it will impact Cell more than most here because everyone else, you could probably say, uh, well, Trunks can neutral, right? UGB can neutral, Gamma's can neutral, Hit does more to blues, and, you know, it's the same thing as kind of Cell, not gonna lie. And Rose, he's already suffering because of low neutral. So, you could uh, argue Cell because his stat spread being an LF and just being worse than because he's an LF than Ultras. Uh, at least from my recollection, uh, would probably be most impacted by this if it is a yellow. Obviously, again, he's a purple. But for now, number five, if you want to argue number four, go for it. Now, number four, I don't think people uh, see this unit enough, and I hope this makes the unit get more uh, usage, even though he, he's a pain in my fucking ass to play against. Number four, I do think, is Mr. UI Omen Goku. Yes, one is two units, by the way. I think that's very obvious still but i think number four is ui omen once again for the last time you could swap omen and sell i would not debate you on swapping omen and sell matter of fact i could even agree at some points but for what i have here why i think it's omen as number four is because how fucking annoying he is listen omen does so much tedious shit just with his stalling because you run omen uvb Goku Frieza. That's a very good team. That becomes a triple Zenkai buff Goku Frieza, a triple Zenkai buff fucking Omen, and a Zenkai buff red fucking uh, Ultra Vegito Blue. If not, it doesn't fucking matter. He doesn't really even need a Zenkai buff, to be fucking honest with you. So, you have a triple Zenkai buff on two of your LF units. You have Omen being a very good staller. I struggle so fucking much to deal with Omen, because if they play very passive, okay, that gets all their subcounts down. If they play very aggressive, it's unexpected. Do you ever have a matchup this just feels like a little rant at this point, but it's just explaining Omen's value. You ever have a matchup where it becomes Omen, Goku, Frieza, UVB, and they lead Omen. They just keep auto-dodging, auto-dodging. And you're playing aggressive to get the gauge out because you want to get that shit out so you can actually hit them. And then one one random move. They, you you do a random blast from full screen, and they said, UVB swap in. Let's, let's fucking go. But they were auto-dodging for like 10 counts straight, and you're like, what the fuck just happened? Because that's Omen forcing you to play a certain play style that's more aggressive. And then once you start doing that, your opponent can be like, oh, flip the fucking switch off, turn the fucking brain off, and then just 
full screen strike and you're like the, the blast was a smart play it was get the gauge out do this fucking stupid shit whatever or let's say you do a blue card they dodge the blue card okay well here's the 50 50 let's see what happens is he gonna auto dodge or is he gonna you know attack me and then instead of all that you kind of you know predict an attack they instead go to uvb you're sidestepping already you got no vanish where are you going you're going to hell you're getting fucking murdered there's triple zen kai boss it's so fucking uh omen omen's a fucking pain in the ass uh, you can see from my expressions of having to fucking explain this, he is such a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> His damage, by the way, he does more to fusions. UV fucking B. You do have less damage taken from fusions. UGB and UVB there. Obviously, I know UGB is not really discussion, but like he is still there, right? You're still facing him a decent amount. So you have such a situation where he's taking less, he's doing more to very good dominant units, especially UVB himself. And then even more so, yes, his green card's an AoE, but it's fine, because, like, he's always going to be in your fucking neck, just trying to fucking be tedious as shit. So it's really not like you're going to miss it a lot. You know, Cell, he's going to struggle a little bit because, well, he might just throw that shit out random. But Omen, he's auto-dodging. He's always up in your face. He's like, oh, what am I going to do? 50-50, here we go. Sidestep or attack or auto-dodge. What am I going to do? He's always going to get that shit in a close-range setting. So it's really not that bad for him in particular as, like, a specific unit. But he's a pain in the ass, bro. His ult also has 100% cup pen. He can stack his, uh, what is it? His damage inflicted buffs when over timer counts. And I know I said, you know, timer count stuff is bad when it's locked behind timers. But with Omen, it's clearly a different setting because he is forcibly making that happen. If you're playing very aggressive with Omen, you're just doing a combo there, just going crazy. Or if you're just playing very passive, you will end up getting at least one of those timer count buffs. On top of the extra damage to fusions, on top of how you're actually beating the fuck out of them because you're triple Zenkai buffed already, on top of the good equips, there's really nothing that's bad about Omen in a setting that is in the current meta. Again, being a purple that doesn't really neutral in offense way, he does defense neutral when enemy swaps for like five timer counts, but he's an offense neutral in any way. But there's no yellows, so he's triple Zenkai buff, free as shit, running with Goku Frieza, stalling for Goku Frieza, getting a fucking uh, random green card, because you have double card, just be a UVB, fucking uh, 5x card, just be with Goku Frieza with 77 blues, like, uh, he's such a pain in the ass, <laughs> that's why he's so good, fuck, I hate facing him, but he's so fucking good, like, use Omen over UGB, if you're running that, like, setup, you got more Zenkai buffs, and it's just better off, now if you get caught, you know, UGB, once again, his best thing that he does besides you know um his later game is going to be again that gauge that stops uvb combo early yes but what's better off not getting hit at all or stopping a combo early yeah exactly omen yes run omen yes exactly number three i do have lf 17 i think it makes it very obvious who number one is and number one is as well because there's two number ones lf 17 his value obviously has gone up with cell releasing and uh the game was kind of having a little bit more of a home now with cell being out and obviously the color coverage of blue and yellow for you know lf 17 there to cover the game was against some reds 17 is just a staple unit you're always going to run into this guy whether he be on a uvb uni reps team or on an androids team or on a fucking future leader slot there's 87 motorcycles outside not sure what the fuck's going on daytona 5000 outside didn't fucking know that's in new york um he's always going to be run on a very solid sub he's going to be fucking tedious because it's bullshit that he can't do with the attribute downgrades and uh or rather attribute upgrades and buff that cancellation he can't do if he's already in then they swap out then he gets the sort of hope trunks gauge and then what the fuck else ever he's just very good in such a setting and uh there's not much to explain he just is what he is he's fucking doing good on damage good uh, i kind of hesitate on that he's doing well on damage could be good if he gets green cards done right support himself but he's doing fine on damage, he's doing good durability, he's giving your allies durability, he's giving your allies support, he's giving, uh, he's doing fucking everything. He gets cover and all, he can go neutral if someone's dead, and he's not really going to die first a lot of the time, so he's in a very good spot, and his value probably will maintain this high for a good minute. Now, number one is obviously going to be UVB and Goku Frieza. The reasoning I have both is because both are number one. I think UVB, it's a very simple way to explain it. UVB, the first 30 timer counts of a match, is number one. You look at Goku Freeze the first 30 time accounts, I gotta build up a Goku that has no um, cover null. He's, you know, purple in a situation where there is a little bit of a yellow running around. There's not too many greens, so being purple isn't 
a full-on positive or negative, but it's not, again, a positive, right? It's just kind of neutral. So you have no cover in all the Goku. You're begging and pleading for a green card so you could do his combo to build him up. But that's probably the worst thing about Goku Frieza, their early game. UVB, a double card draw speed, infinite fucking cards, infinite fucking gauge, infinite fucking cover and all. He just fucking goes crazy. Now, after 30 time accounts, this switches. But the thing is, matches are going so quickly where you're getting rushed 20, 30 time accounts because you could be spar fucking farming 6x Dragon Balls in one hand. You kind of have to acknowledge the fact that UVB is more dominant early game. So if we're going to go in a setting of that, we'll just put him one. Again, they're both number one. It's just that one is number one in this setting. One is number one in the later setting. Now, if a match does go longer and you're, you know, very high stars, you're both fucking whales and you got crazy shit going on. You both missed your rush or some bullshit. Who the fuck knows what happened, right? Or you both can't rush because Goku Frieza, whatever the fuck's happening. Now a fucking car alarm's going crazy. Don't know what's going on outside. Um, you have a very long match. No shit, it's gonna be Goku Frieza, right? You could even argue fucking LS17's better than UVB at, you know, a later game setting. You could argue Cell is, you could argue Sword of Hope, you could argue UGB. But that's not the thing of UVB's dominance. His thing is early game. So, number one, I do think, is UVB and Goku Frieza. UVB, early game, Goku Frieza. Everything after 30 counts, they are better because they'll end up being Frieza, they'll end up being Goku, ramping up, going crazy, get the sub count manipulation, get your, you know, strike done with Goku while there's no fucking units into cover, get your blast done because no one really has blast cover change besides like the gammas and LF-17, so you're kind of free at last at that rate, though you have omen and, you know, hit, but still, you know, in comparison, uh, just the overall blast cover change is only two units here, so yeah, um, UVB, Goku Frieza, number one, but that is my top 10 list, again, just to reiterate the point, Rosé being number 10, we do have hits being number 9, gammas being number 8, UGB being number 7, Sword of Hope being number 6, uh, Cell being number 5, Omen being number 4, LS17 being number 3, UVB and Goku Frieza both being number 1, with UVB early game number 1. As uh, the match progresses, Goku Frieza do end up becoming number 1 after that 30 timer counts. But, what do you guys think of my top 10 list? I'll see you guys in the next one.